Hi, welcome to Bookie. To unlock more world-class bestseller, please download our app. Just search for B-O-O-K-E-Y at Apple Store or Google Play. You will get 7 days free trail with more features. Today we'll unlock the sales bible, the ultimate sales resource. Imagine the following situation. You are a salesperson and you are trying to sell a product to a prospective customer that you are meeting for the first time. As soon as you've introduced yourself and your product, however, the customer immediately says no. What do you do now? The author of this book often faced rejection when selling products. In 1992, the Charlotte Observer published an article about him and his sales skills, which earned him some popularity. So, he decided to sell himself to the journal. And what did he want to sell? The answer was his sales experience and techniques. He wanted to have his own column in the journal where he could write about his sales advice. But he was immediately rejected once he made his proposal. He was told, "It'll never happen." Hearing this objection, He wasn't discouraged, but instead said, "No, it'll never happen here." Just 1 hour later, he struck a deal with the Charlotte Business Journal to publish a weekly column. The objection that is a reason given by the client for why they refuse an offer is an experience every salesperson will have. It's almost a requirement of the business. But does receiving an objection necessarily signify failure? What should a salesperson do after the other person objects to their offer? The sales bible which we will unlock today will give you the answer. In addition to teaching you strategies to combat objection and rejection, it offers many other tips for the beginning and closing of sales. It will also help you improve your networking skills. In other words, it's almost like an encyclopedia of sales strategies. The author Jeffrey Gittimer has over 40 years of experience in sales and 16 years of experience in sales consulting. He is a world-renowned expert in sales and customer service. He began writing a column for the Charlotte Business Journal in 1992. Later, he successfully sold his new book to a publisher. Currently, his books have sold over 1 million copies worldwide. The Sales Bible has been a bestseller for more than 10 years ever since its publication and has received acclaim from salespeople around the world. We will now unlock the key content of the Sales Bible in four parts, exploring how each aspect of selling and networking should be done in order to make a salesperson successful. Part 1: How to begin a sale. Part 2: How to respond to an objection. Part 3: How to close a deal. Part 4: How to network. Okay, now let's start with how to begin a sale. The first step of selling anything is to first approach a perfect stranger. To do it right, we need to overcome our own fear. Ignore the no soliciting sign and walk right past it. You need to view the no soliciting sign in a different way. Like Jeffrey Gittimer says, you must believe that the no soliciting sign's goal is to ban door-to-door peddlers, not you. then give yourself a positive psychological boost since the first visit must be done anyway why not approach it with a good attitude next you need to use the so-called indirect solicitation method making an indirect and non-assertive request for information only from the secretary or administrative person consider this example imagine that you are selling human resource management software you can start with an indirect question like this Hello, my name is Carrie. I've got some important information about human resource management software. Who should I leave it for? After the secretary answers, ask the follow-up questions. May I ask what's his position? Is there anyone else who works with him on this type of decision? If the secretary asks you why you want to know this information, you can tell her, I just hope to share this information with all relevant parties. In most cases, The secretary will give you the answer you wanted and tell you the name of the employee. Here, you can continue with, I'm leaving this information and a note for him. I wonder if I could get his card. Now, there are two possible consequences. One, you get the employee's card or even get to meet him. Or you get rejected. Don't be disappointed even if you're turned down. 
You can attach your card on your information package and ask the secretary to pass it on for you. Now, don't forget to leave a personal note on your card. It may leave an impression on the decider and win you the opportunity for a meeting next time. Keep in mind that the purpose of a first visit is not to strike a deal, but to leave your card and information and to get the relevant employee's name and contact. Afterward, of course, you should thank the secretary or administrative person genuinely. Try to get familiar with them. So the next time you visit they'll remember you for sure and be happy to offer their help. After the first visit, if you get the chance to talk to the person in charge of the decision, prepare a 30-second self-introduction. It should include your basic information, who you are, which company you represent, and what the main purpose of your company is. Remember to introduce yourself or your company creatively, differentiating yourself from other salespeople. By doing so, you leave a deeper impression on your prospect, so he or she will be more willing to respond to you. For example, if your name is similar to that of a celebrity, you can emphasize that jokingly. You can say something like, Hello, I'm Diana, sales manager of Grousse. You know, of course, Princess Diana was called England's Rose, and people who know me always call me Grousse's Rose. Such an introduction will surely leave an impression, and the prospect will be happy to give you more time. In your self-introduction, you can also use another powerful tool, namely the referral. A referral is when a customer refers you to his or her friend or partner. If the prospect trusts the referrer, he or she is more likely to accept you and trust you as well. Thus, the prospect may be more willing to cooperate with you. After the self-introduction, the next step is to ask effective questions that can motivate the prospect. The secret to striking a deal lies in asking effective questions. But what kinds of questions are effective? Effective questions can lead prospects to reflect and tell you what they really need. Take this example. An old lady goes to buy some apples in the farmer's market. The first vendor asks, what kind of fruit would you like? She says apples. And the vendor says, my apples are big and sweet. Would you like to try? The old lady only gives his apples a look and walks away. The next vendor sees that she wants apples, and he begins his introduction like this, I have big apples, small apples, sour apples, and sweet apples. Which kind would you like? The old lady then says she'd like some sour ones. Actually, the sour the better, she says. The vendor then gives her a sample bite, and it's so sour that her eyes water. Very satisfied, the old lady buys a full bag of them. The vendor then asks another question. Why are you buying sour apples? She tells him that her daughter-in-law is pregnant and likes to eat sour things. Hearing this, the vendor takes the chance to promote his oranges, saying, oranges are high in vitamin C. A pregnant woman must get enough vitamin C. It's important so that the baby can be smart and pretty. So, the old lady happily buys a bag of oranges also. As shown in this case, only by asking effective questions can you understand your client's needs and expand on them. If you satisfy their needs, they'll be glad to make more orders. There's one thing that you should keep in mind. After asking your effective question, stop talking. Just listen carefully to what your prospect has to say without making assumptions. Pay attention to details, word choices, and conclusions. Don't interrupt. Give a response and ask follow-up questions at the right time, in order to make sure you understand what they mean and can try to figure out any implications. Many salespeople like to talk endlessly about their products and services. They believe that the more they tell or the more detailed information they give, the more likely the prospect is to buy their product. But actually, it's exactly the opposite. More often than not, listening is more important than speaking. To be a good listener, one needs to practice often and devout time to it. We can try to not talk as much during a get-together or a party. Or we can try to stay silent for one hour or even longer. Learn to be quiet. Just shut up and listen. That concludes the first part. To begin a sale successfully, we need to ignore the no soliciting sign when we make our first visit. We then need to ask indirect questions to get the deciding party's information. When meeting with the deciding party, we should attract their attention and arouse their interest using our 30-second self-introduction. 
Then we need to understand the prospect's real needs by asking effective questions and listening carefully. Now, let's move on to the next section, how to respond to objections. Objections often accompany sales. Many novice salespeople get easily discouraged and frustrated by objections from prospective clients, but Jeffrey Gittimer says that a sale starts when the customer objects. What you need to do is to turn their objection into acceptance. The first step is to identify the real objection. You might be wondering, what is a real objection? Do prospects pretend to object even if they really want to accept? Well, in fact, during the sales process, very few prospects will tell you directly why they don't want to buy your product. They may not like your product or your company. Maybe they can get a lower price from someone else. Or perhaps they don't have the budget for it. However, they rarely tell the truth when they object to your offer. Most prospects don't want to hurt your feelings, so they tell white lies when objecting, such as, I need to think about it. Or I have to talk it over with my family. When the prospect says something like this, it's hard for you to know the real reason for their objection. You should then try to find the real reason for the prospect's objection. Only by understanding that can you find the right way to tackle it and get the chance to turn an objection into an acceptance. To find the real cause behind an objection, you need to ask questions about the objection to confirm whether there's more than one reason. You can change your wording and reconfirm their answers. At last, when you find the real objection, you need to find ways to solve the underlying problem. Then overcome the objection and let the prospect accept your product or service. For example, when the prospect's real objection is that they've already spent their entire budget, there are three ways to overcome this objection. First, you can tell the prospect about the deferred payment plan. Say something like, you can sign a contract first then delay payments for three months or more. Second, you can set up a meeting with the prospect's supervisor, someone who has more authority, and then talk him or her into modifying the budget or making an exemption. Third, you can suggest that the prospect categorizes this purchase under another department, one that still has money left to spend. What if the prospect doesn't understand what the value of your product is and wants to compare it to a competitor's product? In this case, you can offer to compare similar products, services, and prices from your competitors to yours. Point out how you compare favorably in each area, especially in those areas of concern voiced by the customer. Collect this information in advance. It'll help resolve the prospect's concerns and save their time. But if the prospect continues to object to you, saying that the price is too high, you must find out what they really means. Is it that the prospect can find something cheaper and better from elsewhere? Do they really understand the true value of your product or service? Is it that the prospect doesn't want to buy it from you? Or can they really not afford it? You need to give corresponding responses to different objections. Figure out how to better show the purchasing value of your product or service. For example, you can point out that it will reduce costs and losses in the long run. Or make it clear that the prospect can enjoy lifetime benefits after the purchase. You can also challenge what the prospect is willing to pay. Of course, after you've done all these, other than the price, there is no reason that you can't make a deal. In case of the price, the best way to make a deal is to offer the prospect a discount or rearrange the payment plan. Sometimes the prospect may say that he or she will buy the product in six months, simply because they don't trust you enough, or they are not sure what they really want yet. In this case, you can suggest that they sign up now and pay in six months. At the same time, you should let the prospect know that the price will increase in six months, and the profit or savings he or she could gain from a purchase right now will be enough to cover the payment. Consider this example. It's December and you're trying to sell an energy-efficient air conditioner. The prospect says he'll buy it when it's summer. Here you need to tell him that summer is the peak selling season for air conditioners. A product that is now selling for less than $400 will go up to around $450 in the summer. In addition to this, if he purchases it right now, he could save almost enough from the gas and electricity bill during the winter to cover the expense of the air conditioner. 
you also need to be aware that you often have to start over to overcome an objection towards the product. Through asking, listening, demonstrating, and all other necessary sales tools and tips, you can uncover the prospect's real needs. As you earn their trust and increase their desire for the product, it will allow you to close the deal. In addition to turning objections into acceptance, we can actually predict objections and prevent them from happening by preparing ourselves. There are five steps that we can take in order to do this. First, identify all possible objections and write them down. Often the same objection is given in a variety of ways, so keep your list detailed. Second, prepare responses to possible objections so that you can get rid of any doubts and reassure your prospect. For example, imagine that the prospect expresses doubt about a certain function of your product, you can say, our previous customers had the same question, and we've listened to them. Then you talk about what you've adjusted based on their feedback. The prospect will see that their concern has already been addressed. Third, prepare powerful sales tools including referrals from previous customers, testimonial letters, and testimonial videos. You can also use stories about your products or your company that can help the prospects trust you, or charts that show comparisons between you and your competitors. These tools can provide powerful support when responding to the prospects' objections. The fourth step is to rehearse your scripts through role play and then revise what you want to say. You can rehearse with your colleagues. They can play the role of the prospect as you try to sell them something. Keep refining your scripts accordingly as you rehearse. The fifth and final step is to practice with real customers. Also, adjust your responses to the objection based on what happens in reality. With such thorough preparations and rehearsals, objections will begin to seem less frightening. Okay, that's all for part two. In this section, we talked about how to identify real objections that one may face during the selling process, how to ask the right questions to find the real reason behind an objection, and then close the deal by solving the underlying problem. Moreover, to overcome more objections, we need to have effective ways to predict and prevent them so that we close more deals and make more money. Today we are just sharing limited bookie. To unlock more key insights of world-class bestseller, please download our app. Just search for B-O-O-K-E-Y at Apple Store or Google Play. You will get 7 days free trail with more features.